It was short. If you've ever played competitive pickleball, you know how crazy line calls can get. What happened to it being a chill sport for the old folks? Yet everyone has an automatic pickleball line caller in their pocket. Or at least they could. Here's how I think it should work. Each person comes to the court, turns on their line caller app, sets it in a holder on the baselines, and then the app would detect the court lines and link up with the other apps in your group. Each time a ball bounces near the line, the app saves and replays the close ball, or ideally makes the call for you. I know it's not a perfect solution, but it could work. And really, this is about preventing heart attacks. Arguing over line calls is not good for grandpa's heart condition. And it wouldn't cost hundreds of thousands of dollars like the Hawkeye system that's used in tennis. And maybe it's better suited for pickleball clubs where they could set up something like this and leave it set up versus people setting it up on their own. You could also take it with you to whatever court you're at. If you're feeling competitive or you just have one of those people on your team that tends to call a lot of balls out when the game gets close. The real question in my mind is whether the phone can handle doing this processing and logic at 60 frames per second more or less, which is probably the max that we can collect the data at on most phones right now. And at 60 frames per second, it's not gonna give us the best resolution on exactly where the ball hits the line, but I think we can do some trajectory tracking and nevertheless give the players a replay so that they can make their best assessment. From here on out, this video will get more technical and I'll walk you through how I built this prototype using RoboFlow, Python, Google Collab, and some other Python libraries. And the source code is linked in the video description. So let's dive into the overall plan and architecture here. I'm thinking to start with some R&D, uh, moving into testing and development, and eventually migrating it to mobile and building an app if we ever get that far. First off, I wanna answer some basic questions like where to place the camera, how do we detect the ball, how do we detect the court lines, and then we want to train a model that's going to help us with these things, a machine learning model. And um, we're going to collect some sample images and video from the court and see what we get. And diving into this sort of theory side of things, with pickleball, the ball's hard plastic. So if it bounces right next to the line, it really depends on where the ball hits, not where it looks like it hits from, say, a top-down angle. And so this is why I think having a camera right on the baseline will be best. Um, it also gives us a lot of flexibility for resolution and spectrum uh, changes if we want to optimize for performance later on. Also, it's less likely to be blocked by people's feet. Um, so we're going to collect some sample data, and then for detecting the ball, I'm going to implement a YOLO convolutional neural network because it's high performance, and we can eventually move it into a small instance, um, which gives us pretty fast frame rates. This is an old uh, test from years ago showing that at a, a really low resolution, people were getting whatever 14 milliseconds per frame. Um, so what is that? Uh, 71 frames per second. So that would work for us if we could do that. I'm not sure if how the resolution is going to work, but we'll see. And for detecting the court lines, I have a couple of thoughts there. First is to have a calibration step. So when the app starts and the person sets the camera up, uh, the app finds the court lines, but it's not trying to do that all the time. For this, then I'm thinking to set up a line segmentation using a segmentation model. If we do end up needing to run this real time or if the camera position for whatever reason is changing, I was thinking to use another YOLO model with essentially a boundary line orientation so that the boundary lines would automatically orient at the edge of the court. But we could also use um, some other edge detection logic to figure out where the edge of those lines are. So let's dive in. The first thing I want to do is train a model and test it with some sample videos from my local pickleball court. So I went to the local pickleball court and collected some video at different angles from down the line to at the net height to at the back line and threw balls to where they bounced just barely at the line on either side of it. And next, I uploaded these videos to a RoboFlow project so I could label them and train a model to automatically detect the ball or the lines. Once the data was uploaded to RoboFlow, I could use their auto labeling tool to automatically detect the ball in most of the images and then set up a safe training data set. After doing this for multiple video files, I had a decently high quality set of training data. It took a couple of hours to train the model, but I got an email when it was done, and then I could start to download or deploy this model to a Python script. Um, so then I set up a Google Collab notebook. In the Collab notebook, I install some required libraries from RoboFlow, including their supervision, annotation, and tracking library, as well as the inference library, which allows for downloading the model we just trained and running it real time on some video data. And next we can pull in the get model function from the inference library. 
which will allow us to download our model uh, using our model ID, which is in the RoboFlow interface, and our RoboFlow API key, which you can save in the keys section. And we also want to test that supervision is set up correctly and working well. So I linked my Google Drive to the files section of Collab here and referenced a sample image and then imported supervision and loaded the video using this Git Video Frames Generator and plotted the image, which worked here. Next, we want to test that our model is working and able to detect the objects that we trained it on, which will look like this when it detects the ball and the court line. And the way we do this is we load in a box and label annotator from supervision, load the image, call the model to and tell it to uh, make an inference using a confidence threshold, and then convert those results into a format supervision can work well with, set up our labels, and then add our labels in our box to the uh, video frame or image, and then we plot that image. So now that I know this is working on the image, I wanna get it working on video data so I can start to develop some intuitions about eventually doing it real time. And I'm gonna move a little faster through this because assuming if you get this far that you could start to dig into the code and use AI to help you understand everything if you need to. So what I was thinking to do is detect the court line, expand this boundary a little bit so that only when balls enter in and around the court line, we can see where they bounce at and eventually replay that to the user. And since it's moving pretty fast, I wanna draw a line uh, tracing the trajectory of the ball. So this is what it'll look like. So we can see as the ball gets tracked, enters the court line, draw a tracing line, see where it lands. And you can see we don't have an exact frame of where it lands, but we can understand that it landed in bounds and as it bounces out. And so this could be uh, running real time and generating quick replays of exactly where the ball was, helping someone to quickly make a decision of whether the ball was inbounds or out, out of bounds. Okay, so yeah, we load up some annotators, set up some classes for the line drawing, um, run this whole thing in a callback function so that we process each frame of the video, um, set up our court line, court line bounding box, and then we need to uh, track when the ball comes into the frame and um, get its center point and draw a line if necessary, if the, if the ball is inside this defined green line zone. And we run all of this logic on each frame of the video and end up with our saved video, which we can then export and looks like this. So I thought this was really cool seeing the ball come near the line and have the trajectory and what I would really love to see is an alpha transparency of exactly where the ball was when it bounced closest to the line. So to do that, we need to detect bounces and set up an overlay of the image data from the frame where it bounced. And this is what that will look like. So as the ball comes flying in, we'll track the trajectory the whole time, find where the trajectory changed dramatically, and we'll call that a bounce and then we'll save the image data from that frame and overlay it with some level of alpha transparency. So in this code, it's taking from the last section and we'll add in a function for detecting bounces, which looks at that trajectory change again, and also a function for overlaying the image and applying some alpha transparency and unpacking the coordinates from where exactly the ball was detected at that frame. So other than that, we're doing more or less the same things, just looking to see if a bounce happened and applying the overlay if needed. Okay, so I think this is a good spot to pause on this video. I'll probably continue building this. If you want to see me build this out, please leave a comment below and let me know if you have any questions or thoughts on how best to implement this. Also, if you are looking through the code, there's a couple things that I left in here. One was just some additional code for leaving like an alpha transparency trail instead of a trajectory line. I think I prefer the trajectory line, but this was a fun experiment. And lastly was some code for doing line detection on the boundary parameter. So I'm thinking about using this for doing the automated line calling, actually making the call based on where the ball is detected at when it bounces. So I need to implement that and uh, should get to that in the next video. But yeah, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below. And until next time.